aware of who I am, uh, Sheriff Joe Lombardo, Clark County. Um, there's going to be a little bit different orchestration in this press conference as compared to the rest. Um, what I'm going to do right now, I think it's important that we address uh, the victim issues we are experiencing and the resource issues that we are experiencing. So I'm going to uh, key on that, on the original portion of this, and then subsequently Commissioner Sislak is going to provide some donation information and acknowledgement. And then I, after that, I will come back to the podium and address the overall investigation, where we stand and where we are going. Now, reference the investigation piece. I don't want to repeat of what I experienced yesterday. Um, it's an ongoing investigation, so I'll be limited in the details that I provide you. Um, but hopefully we can get through this with some modicum of decorum. Um, so please um, don't rush me all at once when we get to the question phase. I will identify you if you just raise your hand. Sound fair? Yes. All right, we'll get through this. Okay, so as a matter of uh, formality, our department has worked through the night to identify all the victims of Sunday evening's mass shooting on route, at the Route 91 Harvest Festival. We have identified all but three victims. We still have an active scene at the grounds near Mandalay Bay, so we ask anyone to stay away from that area until further notice. The FBI is working diligently to clear that scene. So the question is, the FBI versus us. Um, we have uh, partnered with the FBI, as I said, from the very beginning of this in the investigative phase. The FBI has brought uh, a large amount of resources out of Washington, D.C. to assist us with that. Um, so we, it, the reason why the Harvest Festival is still in continuation of investigation is not only solely uh, related to the removal of the victims, but it's also the documentation of the scene. Uh, so we're using um, the best practice technology to ensure that we have complete documentation. That's why it is taking a longer period of time associated with this. So we, we ask for everybody's patience. As far as Las Vegas Boulevard, uh, north and south, uh, we anticipate to be open and shortly in the next few hours um, to benefit with commerce and what we do as a community. All right, the, the key component here is resources and victim identification. So uh, bear with me. Um, I'm going to try to get the, through this the best I can. But the important piece is if you missed a number, um, we are putting up on LVMPD.com in the next hour the listing of all numbers I shall provide you today and for people out in the public uh, to contact us if they are lacking this or they don't see this broadcast. Okay, we're asking for anyone who might have information about the shooting in a criminal capacity or is a victim of the shooting to contact us via 311. If you are out of state, if you have left since um, the shooting, and you have discovered you are you you feel that you have become a victim, or you have realized you have an injury associated to it. Um, we're still asking you to contact us, but the out-of-state number will be 702-828-3111. Additionally, if you are local and you have the ability to respond to a local substation, a working police substation. Um, locals are familiar with, you have the ability to file a report at that location. Now the family reunification. All that is occurring at the Family Resource Center at the Convention Center located at 3150 Paradise Road. You can go there to file a missing person report, you can go there to have contact with the coroner's office, and you can go there to get answers to your questions as far as family reunification. The phone number, if you have left the area, is 1-866-535-5654. Now, we went through a little short process here recently where that number was down. We provided a separate number, um, but we will go back to that original number because we have the technical aspects of that fixed. So I want to be very clear on the difference. If you are reporting a crime or you feel you are a victim of a crime, 311 is your outlet. Or 
a local police substation. If you are looking for victim information or family reunification, the Family Resource Center on Paradise Road is your point of contact. <clears throat> now, personal property. We were getting several questions throughout yesterday and continuing today on people attempting to recover their personal property from the Route 91 scene. Um, we are working out the details of that. We're in the planning phase of that, and we will have an answer for that in the next couple hours. So LVMPD.com will provide an answer to that um, probably before we have another press conference. Uh, so, but we are working diligently uh, to get individuals who left personal property at the scene back to them as soon as possible. I anticipate it will not take place at the Route 91 location, uh, but I do not want to give you furtherance of clarification at this point. So you will be provided that. The other issue is donations. As you can imagine, in any critical incident, the outpouring of support um, from private citizens, corporations, and everybody else associated with concern for the victims is overwhelming. And we appreciate that. But it comes a point where we can't manage it. Now, the Red Cross is unable to manage it. Um, we are unable to manage it at the substations. Um, so if it's hard goods, such as water or canned goods or stuff that is not, will not become perishable, um, three square and Catholic Charities is accepting those donations. So we're asking you um, to provide that information to your listening public and to uh, accept donations at that point. So the areas of, let me give you the addresses for those. So Catholic Charities is obviously at 1501 Las Vegas Boulevard North and three square is located at 4190 North Pecos Road. At this point, I will uh, um, acquiesce to Commissioner Sisolak, and he will give you an update on the donation phase of this as far as victim um, satisfaction, and then we'll, I will return and we will conduct uh, a Q&A associated with the investigation. Commissioner. Thank you, Sheriff, and we appreciate you all being here today to give you a bit of an update on where we stand. Uh, the fund that the sheriff and I set up yesterday has now surpassed 53,000 individual donations. It's in excess of $3.7 million as we speak. I want to bring, especially, we need a lot more resources. We're going to need a lot more money. We've got individuals that are going to need future surgeries and, and health and so forth moving forward. I want to acknowledge a few special individuals not included in that total of $3.7 million. Last night, a private citizen called both the sheriff and I and contributed $500,000 to the fund. That is not included in that total this morning. Uh, Wayne and Kathleen Newton called me and they have donated $100,000. That is not included in that total. Uh, for those who want to contribute and don't want to do it on GoFundMe, you can make a check to Las Vegas Victims Fund and mail it either to the county office, to my office, or to the sheriff's office. But I just got off the phone with Jim uh, Murren from MGM International and the sheriff and I both spoke to Jim and uh, obviously, they have stepped up in an enormous manner with this community and everything that uh, they continue to do. And on behalf of MGM and their over 50,000 employees, they have contributed $3 million to this fund. So uh, we appreciate everyone's support, the donations from $5 to now $3 million. And there's a lot of need and we are going to do everything we possibly can to raise money for each of these individuals. So we appreciate you continuing to encourage folks your viewers and readers to support the uh, campaign. It's Las Vegas Victims, either on uh, GoFundMe or you can make a check to Las Vegas Victims Fund. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, we're working through the idea of possible distribution that comes with. We've already got some uh, inquiries. I think it's going to be a few days before we can coordinate how we're going to distribute money. Uh, right now, we're not looking at the minor property losses that some people have called on regarding you know, backpacks and shoes and phones. We're looking at more major expenses as it relates to, you know, uh, surgeries, medical expenses, funeral expenses, transportation, so forth. But we should have more details with you. We're working through the county office and the sheriff's office to develop something in the immediate future in terms of where people can go, who they can call to start distributing the money that the people are most desperate. So thank you all very much. <coughs>
Okay, just a quick synopsis or current status of the investigation. I won't reiterate what we discussed yesterday in previous uh, press conferences, um, but we have um, completed the investigation at the Reno property, um, and I'm sure the question will be presented of what, what was recovered there. So it was numerous electronic items, uh, additionally five handguns and two shotguns and a plethora of ammunition. So um, we have served search warrants at three separate locations. Um, that would be the room at the Mandalay Bay, um, the Mesquite location, and the Reno location. Additionally, um, we served a search warrant on the suspect's vehicle located at the Mandalay Bay. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Sure. Yes, sir. Um, the question was, is there, what are the modifications associated with the weaponry? Um, ATF is uh, participating in that evaluation. I can't give you an answer on whether any of them are automatic or not, uh, but we are aware of a device called a bump stock, and, uh, and that enables an individual to speed up the discharge of ammunition. Um, I don't want to give you any more details on that, um, but in partner with the FBI, the ATF, uh, they are uh, sending those weapons um, back east to the cri FBI crime lab uh, for further evaluation. Just to be clear, sure. you think found that there? Yes. Okay. Yes, sure. absolutely. Yes, sir. Was she given authority and information about his motive, about his behavior, what that information No, we don't have that information yet, but I will assure you that the investigation with her is ongoing, um, and we anticipate some information here from her shortly. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, I do not. Now, here you go. <laughs> Just let me back up a little bit. There's a lot of information I do know, okay? But it's an ongoing investigation, and when I say I do not know, I may know. Um, but, <laughs> but um, as you can imagine, in a criminal investigation, we want to ensure the continued safety of our community and then all those questions are answered and we I assure you this investigation is not ended uh, with the demise of Mr. Paddock. Sir, yes. Um, no, I'll answer your last question first, no. Uh, we are making progress, but I don't have complete answers yet. Um, so I anticipate a, a substantial amount of information to come in in the next 48 hours. Hold on, let me finish the rest of this. As far as the injuries, um, you know, it goes across the board. The coroner uh, commented on that yesterday. We have trampled injuries. We have people trying to escape um, injuries of their own de um, device. Uh, we have gunshot wounds. So if you're looking at total type of injuries associated with all their injuries and the people that died, um, it goes across the board. Uh, I can't give you a percentage associated with gunshot versus um, other types of injuries. Are the numbers, though, the general number 59, the five things, are those the same? Um, we believe the injury number has uh, decreased slightly. And when I say slightly, maybe 20. Um, because we had a double count error occurring at one of the hospitals. Any deaths? But we're looking close and still in close proximity of the number I provided you. Um, I can't tell you her current whereabouts right now. All I know is the Philippines, um, and we uh, we are in conversation. Is she a uh, currently, she's a person of interest. The girlfriend. Sure. Yes. Sure. Yes, ma'am. The Daily Mail has released photos that say it shows a hotel room after the SWAT team entered, and it shows guns and ammunition inside. Many outlets are decontaminating. Can you verify the legitimacy of these photos? And should any other outlets disseminate them? I can't verify whether they're legitimate or not. What I can tell you is I'm very troubled by it. Um, we have an internal investigation occurring as we speak on how those 
photographs were obtained by the public forum. Sir, 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 can you talk then to what was found inside that hotel room that the gunman used? Specifically, CBS News is reporting that there was a camera inside that room. Was the gunman reporting? Was the gunman transmitting that video anywhere else? Um, I'm not aware of any transmission, but there was cameras. There was cameras located um, in outside of the room and inside of the room, uh, along with the firearms. And he had set up how many cameras? Uh, I, I don't know what the specific it's numbers do know. Um, well, I, I, I anticipate he was looking for anybody coming uh, to take him into custody. So essentially, so. you have a recording of him carrying out these crimes? No, that's not essentially what I'm saying. That is being evaluated. Uh, the FBI took all digital and electronic uh, evidence into custody, and we are evaluating. Sir, 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 sir. Yes, sir. No, we haven't developed that um, yet. Sir, the, the I will provide you that information at a later date. To follow on that, We're unable to confirm that. We're unable to confirm that. What's the clarity? What's the clarity you're seeking? Uh, we received a call at 10.08 p.m. Um, the best of our estimates and, re and video review, uh, he continued to fire um, at a progressive successive rate for approximately nine minutes. Um, as you can see by any video you see in the public space, it was hard to determine where they were coming from. Um, once it was evaluated, it was coming from the Mandalay Bay. As you can imagine, how hard it would be to pinpoint the room from the outside. Um, Officers subsequently formed up, teamed up, and moved over to the Mandalay Bay to, in order to locate and engage. Um, but that was in conjunction with the Mandalay Bay security. Now, this is an opportunity for me to tell you something. The Mandalay Bay security was fantastic. I don't want anybody assuming that they are unsafe by, you know, staying at one of our hotels. We would not have uh, engaged this individual in the time lapse that we did uh, without their assistance. Uh, we received information via their, their dispatch center and or their uh, operation center, their call center, uh, from individuals staying within the Mandalay Bay that helped us locate where this individual was sequestered. Sure. Hold on, I want to finish her question. All right. Um, and so subsequently, that takes time. As you can imagine, um, moving from the location of the event, deciding whether you're gonna help victims evacuate or you're gonna decide whether you're gonna take charge and put an element together and go engage this individual. So we have, we have a lot of bifurcation of responsibilities associated, especially in a dynamic event. I, I wanna say kudos to those officers that got together and said, this is what we trained for, active shooter, we're putting an element together, let's go engage this individual and locate them, okay? And that's what we did. And when the, the security officer was engaged by the suspect, we backed off for immediate apprehension and SWAT team formed and made entry. What time was the security officer engaged? I don't have that time for you. Sir, sure, how concerned are you about your officers facing weapon breaches? I, absolutely concerned. The world has changed and, um, and you know, who would have ever imagined this situation? I couldn't imagine it. And for this individual to take it upon himself to create this chaos and harm is unspeakable. And, you know, we have to try to spitball or what if these uh, situations at all points when we train and ensure that we have proper response. And I think we did a fantastic job. Sir, sure. Mandalay Bay security identified the room before the SWAT arrived? No. Uh, well, yeah, before SWAT arrived, but not before my officers arrived. Um, the, um, they were married or hand-to-hand -hand with my officers uh, when we made entry over to the hotel. And it was a matter, if you recall yesterday, I said between floor 29 and 32. And during that process of 
evaluating the floors, uh, we received additional information uh, where he was located and they immediately responded. Sure. Was it one time did you have squad three? I don't have that number for you. And there's only one room. Did you continue to see from the intervention until the squad two was in, or why did you stop seeing him? That's for us to evaluate in the investigation. No, they were throughout the venue. They even had some um, victims uh, that met their demise outside of the venue. And then we had individuals who had been shot uh, and they continued to run away. And then they uh, passed away um, several blocks from the venue. Sure. We also had very heroic acts of people attending the event. We have numerous v videos depicting people attending, normal citizens providing medical aid and providing transportation uh, for victims to get to the hospital. Sir? Yes, sir. Uh, going back to the point that uh, my colleague Sarah Montana was just showing the room, it sounds from these, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm interpreting this wrong, but it sounds like he had set those cameras up to give himself warning on the approach of police officers. You know, in your mind, if that indeed was the case, and I know you don't want to get into the mind of a madman on this foot, but how would you judge this man's preparation I don't even need that um, bit of information to make a judgment. This individual is premeditated, obviously premeditated. The fact that he had the, the type of weaponry and the amount of weaponry in that room, um, it was pre-planned extensively, and I, I'm pretty sure he evaluated everything that he did in his actions, which is troublesome. Um, I, I, I was hoping, you know, I pray that in these situations that a citizen, because we can't be at all places at all times, that a citizen sees something, says something, and we act on that. Quite often what we experience in our line of work, a citizen thinks it's trivial, and they say, no, nah, I don't want to bother the police. We ask you to bother the police, because um, those individuals, especially uh, housekeeping type individuals, or any cab drivers, anybody in the public space that can assist us, we ask them to call for them. Sure. Sure. His girlfriend has any knowledge. Okay, let me ask back here, Ricardo. Um, during while he was discharging his weapons, yeah. we are not aware of that. No security guard or police other than the encounter at the room. And can, you, can you expand on what went right? Uh, I know you practiced with scenarios like this, maybe it's not exactly your scenario. Can you expand on what went right uh, with your perspective? You know what, I'm glad you asked that, Ricardo, because obviously people have the assumption things went wrong uh, in this type of carnage. But what went right is we saved hundreds of lives. In an event, and this guy having the ability with those weaponry, uh, the carnage that could occur outside of what did occur, uh, a lot more was prevented um, because of our police action in short time and private security action in short time uh, to save some lives. Sure. Can I ask you, with all of this in the room, with the, the cameras now, the guns, everything else, yesterday you had said that there had been hotel staff inside that room during the day. Is that still believed? Did he turn away housekeeping? Did um, the only thing I know at this point is room service was provided. Sure, could I ask you, uh, I'm, I'm going to move it, but I'm sorry, but I just wanted to clarify. Do you believe you are going to find the murder for this crime? I absolutely believe that. Yes, I do. And why did the FBI not try to trace it back immediately? How do you know that's not occurring? Well, I guess that's what I'm asking. Is that, yeah. is that what's happening? That is occurring. Sure. Sir, yes, ma'am. I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> no, I am. I'm not being uh, sarcastic. Um, we're doing good. I'm actually very proud of our people. I mean, this guy here is the local SAC, Aaron Rouse, uh, in charge of the FBI. You know, it's important. Greg Castle talked about this yesterday, the chief of the Clark County Fire Department. I'm telling you right now, this jurisdiction has the best partnerships, I believe, in the United States as far as public safety. Um, we would not be able to accomplish what we did, as you described, in the last 48 hours without that partnership. Um, the FBI stepped into the plate to help us with the uh, evidence, documentation, and prosecution. Uh, the fire department, here, here's, he didn't do a good job describing it yesterday, Greg. The fire department in our jurisdiction marries with a police officer during a critical incident. 
I beg you to find uh, such a robust type operation in the rest of the United States. Um, quite often what you uh, observe in the public space is the fire department will wait until it's secured by public safety before aid is rendered. Our primary mission is aid and the safety of the public. Um, they took it upon themselves to train with us, to marry with us, and to go into the fray to assist the victims. If you look at the video, you quite often see individuals with helmets on and vests on. Those are firefighters uh, standing next to us. So I think it's very important for you to ask that question. It's very important for me to convey the answer. Um, but the next 48 hours, we'll be able to tell. Uh, we've gone into um, incident management mode. Uh, so in other words, people have to get sleep and nourished and, and, and because we don't want to make any mistakes in the investigation. Sure. Yes. Um, we do have some information. I'm not at liberty to say at this point. Uh, there's, there's the guy I was just talking about. <laughs> Make sure you get him on camera. <laughs> All right. Yes, yes ma'am. Have you been in communication with the Philippine government of yet? Have they been cooperative with the whereabouts of the candidate? Yes, we have. Sure. 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 A couple of questions. One is. Okay. Uh, before we get too long and too um, contracted in this uh, press interview I'll ask your answer your questions Ken I'll ask a couple additional more and then I want acknowledgement of the people standing behind me as you can see it's our a congressional delegation and our other public safety officials and it's very hard for them to conduct federal government and local government while they're standing behind me but I think it's important for you to realize their community support and they want to be there uh, amongst all, everything else they do to ensure that people understand we're bringing all resources associated with this to bear in order for we meet success. Go ahead, Ken. The first, the first one is to button up the cameras for us to be able to report the first one. Is that we had a camera on a service cart in the hallway and with the security guard was shot. I tell you what, I wish I had some of you on my investigative team because it's amazing. <laughs> It's amazing some of the information you come up with, but I'll confirm it. Yes, one of them was on a service card. Now, um, the other question is, 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 the, is the one that I wanted to get to. You talked about motive. You, you talked about premeditation. You want to learn what he, why he did what he did. Videos, you, can you tell us the number of interviews you're going to have to do to do that? You talked about you're reviewing cameras, videos, computers. Who did he last talk to? Um, I'll take. I'll give you a global answer on that. Uh, yes, yes to everything you said. Yes, we are evaluating all that. Um, I can't give you because the, the numbers change and it's fluid, Ken. On the number of videos we're evaluating, just on body camera videos, we had over 67 videos we were evaluating. Okay. Um, so you would say, well, you had a lot more officers at the event than that, sure. And you only had 67. No, not all officers are assigned cameras because they work in investigative function or plain clothes. But when they take on the role of special events over time, um, they don't, we don't require them to wear body cameras. Uh, so we are evaluating those cameras as we speak. We have 90% of that done. But then we have all the, um, the common public space cameras that we're evaluating. Um, and I can't remember the rest of your question. I'm sorry. Well, we're also talking about the computers and his cameras. Right. So a lot of this, you're, you're probably saying, well, Jesus, Sheriff, it's 2017. How come it's taken so long for you to evaluate that? Because it's evidentiary. Um, there's chain of custody issues associated with that. We have to ensure we're dotting the I's and crossing the T because you know there's criminal defense attorneys out there, right? And there's this thing called the Constitution. We have to ensure that we're abiding by that um, and we ensure that, I don't know if we have possible future prosecution. Would I, you know, you heard me say that we're comfortable that we have the suspect in the custody, but something more may come of that investigation. And I want to understand the motivation that you describe, okay, to prevent any future incidents. And you know, did this person get radicalized unbeknownst to us? And we want to identify that source. Yeah. Hold on, Simon, and then I'll answer the president's question. That the congressional support include uh, conference calls? Uh, that's not for this form. That's a long, contracted discussion. That's not for this form. So far, it's not a problem. Yeah, with regards to the president's visit, the president's visit will, uh, will visit tomorrow. 
any security level in the city is safe and included? If you can tell us what the president's plan while he's in this talk and with how long he will be here for. Uh, I also know that it's, it's been reported that you will meet with the local sheriff. I'm assuming that will be yourself. I'm the only one. <laughs> and the mayor and the governor. So could you please give us... Uh, uh, you're, you're correct in who he's visiting. And I, it is a matter of uh, uh, secrecy and OPSEC, operational security, that I can't give you his travel plans. Um, and that will be obviously provided in close proximity of his arrival. Any, uh, any information of if you will visit the, the hospital or the MDH? Uh, Ma'am, I can't answer that question because of operational security. Um, but as you very well know, you have the resources to determine that upon his arrival. Um, and I can't speak to what his agenda is. Uh, what I can tell you on part of your question was what is normal protocol when the sheriff, I mean, the sheriff, the president, the president or the vice president of, or anybody of uh, dignitary space of that equality, um, we ensure their safety by the joining forces, basically. It takes a great deal of resources to ensure the safety of the president and we will provide that because of our public cooperation um, through NHP, North Las Vegas, uh, Henderson, Boulder City, as you can imagine, all the people will come to bear. Now, an important piece on that is the president's visiting. Route 91 investigation, and if you, don't, if you recall, I'm a police department, so we have over 3.3 million calls a year that we deal with, so we have to continue with our investigations, our response and normal police business in order to be successful. So I ask your cooperation and don't get frustrated if I don't have a press conference every five minutes because I have a job to do and my folks have a job to do. So I want to thank everybody for attending today and hopefully, hopefully as a result of your attendance and your broadcast, this investigation will be not as long as I want it to be. Can you say that again? <laughs> Can you say it again? Please. Say it again, well, Rachel. As a local reporter, you have been very transparent in the past about Metro's de-escalation tactic. In full pursuit of Max Keating, there was talk at the time of a very delayed police response trying to decide when to make entry. Can you talk about the decision to make entry into Paddock's hotel room? Well, I will not disparage another police department's response. But I will tell you, we quite often learn from what other people do. And everything we do on a critical incident is based on a self-evaluation. Um, and as a result of what occurred in Columbine, what occurred in Sacramento, what occurred in Boston, what occurred at the Pulse nightclub, police response has changed. Um, by the fact that the fire department is standing with us is monumental, okay? Um, so. We have found it's better, instead of uh, securing a perimeter and hoping the person doesn't continue to uh, do acts of carnage associated with their actions, that uh, uh, even a small police response will stop the suspect's actions. And so what I, to answer your question in reference to Mandalay Bay, that training, um, we were listening and we were paying attention. Officers on their own, without direction of a supervisor, knew what they had to do. Uh, they came together, um, formed a team, made a response, and they didn't wait on SWAT, okay? They said, we have to stop. It's easy to say, well, we're waiting on SWAT. They're the experts in tactical intrusion, um, but our officers took it upon themselves to act. To clarify, patrol officers made entry to the room? No. Patrol officers evaluated floor by floor of the space between 29 and 32 uh, where the suspect was. Uh, they formed the security, uh, they evacuated rooms, and they formed a perimeter at the suspect's location. By unfortunate, unfortunate acts of the suspect, the security guard was engaged during that process. Quick yes, no, was the security guard in a company with officers or was the security guard alone with? He was acting independently. He got separated from our team. Sure, can I just yeah. confirm real fast, yesterday, I'm comfortable saying she's located in the Philippines. And you know what? Uh, just so you know, I'm not giving you bad info. No, no, no. Okay. I wasn't that. I was no. Yeah. Um, 
she was traveling. Yeah. And so subsequently, um, we have determined her location. Okay, I'm sorry, and I know it's. Uh, I, you have to give me some some uh, deference. I'm I'm currently done answering questions. Okay, um, so I want to thank you.